Hello, this is Dread from Epic Builds. In today's video topic, we're going to go over my attempt at making Harvest Crit work. Now, overall, I would say the build is a success, mainly just because, you know, Death Seal and Lich Form as a combination in general is powerful no matter what you do, including Harvest. Now, you are playing a squishy range class as a melee, you know, bruiser, so you definitely uh, have some issues there. But Harvest itself is 90% of the time really good because there's a node inside of it called Skull Stacks. Now, if you reach six Skull Stacks, you deal 300% more damage with your next hit. Why that's important is because each of those Skull Stacks can be... You know, you can get a skull stack from each enemy hit. So if you hit six enemies, your next hit will get the 300% more damage. Well, sometimes you'll be fighting something like Oribus, where there's only one. So it takes six attacks to get the 300% more damage. Or sometimes, in the footage you'll see later, you'll have, like, the shamans, where there's three enemies to hit for the skull stacks. So you get a 300% more damage hit every two hits. And this leads to a lot of inconsistency in your damage mainly you know against a single target that has nothing else even a target even two targets together is way more damage and quality of life than maybe like a singular target all by itself and i believe the quickest way they could fix this is just make it so unique and rare enemies give you like two skull stacks per hit i think that would instantly fix harvest in a lot of ways that's what i've noticed anyways uh the build itself is pretty tanky so i went with the tanky route by utilizing a katana which was a new base added this patch which gives you like 80 percent crit multi and then of course uh, we run melee crit and uh, attack speed on it because there's nothing else to run because uh melee melee necrotic damage doesn't exist because we get all of our damage from stacking intelligence right and with harvest so and then we can also run a shield because of that, which is very strong as a uh, block is very strong. I have an exalted shield on, but you could definitely just get away with a regular shield with just some meager block investment. And you get way tankier as a result, because whenever you do block, it's like way better. Now, the biggest issue, like I said, with this build is single target, but the clear itself is fine. You can deal with clear. That's like quick and easy. Uh, one thing I did notice, I went and looked over Lizard's uh, push with Harvest, and I was like, realizing, wait a second, why is he able to like push so high? I'm like, oh, it's because he's using Death Wave. So Death Seal has a skill inside of it called Death Wave. Now it gives you like a big ring of death around you whenever you know you pop Death Seal, and it does a lot of damage. Turns out, even with even with you not scaling adaptive spell damage, like I'm not in this build. Uh, you still do a lot of damage with it. So, yeah. Kind of sad that we had to, you know, focus on using Death's Wave as well. As, you know, it's kind of sad that we can only, we couldn't just use Harvest. But, you know, it's kind of just the state of the game right now. You kind of have to just follow what you can to make builds work. And, you know, this build requires you to run Death Wave. So, for quality of life purposes mainly. Now... Other things that this build does is we have an insane amount of maneuverability thanks to Reap and also Transplant, making uh, maneuvering monoliths pretty easy. The only issue I'd say overall is when you do get kicked out of Reaper form, the build feels like complete and utter ass, and that's just simply just kind of how, you know, that's kind of how the entirety of Lich works, is like whenever you get kicked out of Reaper form and Death Seal, you feel like a wet noodle, and that's just, you know, simply how the game works. Uh, with that being said, let's get into the video, shall we? All right, here we are in game with the build. Uh, it's the sinking cloud jokes here, the failed AOD build. Uh, just respect it into a lich instead, and into like a harvest AOD lich. Now, for the first skill, we're gonna go over his harvest. So harvest itself implicitly gets one ne melee necrotic damage per point of intelligence. The reason why this is important is this flat scaling that comes from the skill itself does not get affected by the 70% damage effectiveness. Now, Harvest does deal double damage against cursed enemies, which is insanely strong, hence why we're using Bone Curse, and it makes up for that 70% damage effectiveness, right? So we deal double damage versus cursed enemies. Now we grab 
one no travel into Harrowing Blade. I actually do have the Necrotic Shred Blessing, so this is up to 70% pretty much. Uh, three points into Great Scythe. If you were to get a plus two to Harvest, which I don't have right now, you would put two points into this. Two points travel into Spectral Whetstone. The base crit is actually nice though. Seven points into Symbol of Loss. So this node right here, it says Harvest Hits deal more damage against cursed enemies. This used to be increased damage instead of more damage. So yeah, that, that kind of fixed Harvest. So you can actually play it as an end game skill instead of, you know, you know pretending it doesn't exist. Two points into Finality Travel, then five points into Skull Stacks. This is what I was talking about in the intro. So you can have you can hit multiple enemies right and get six stacks very quickly or you can just hit a single target six times and wait for your skull stacks to come up which is rather annoying and one of the biggest issues i have with this build i believe that if unique and rare enemies give you like two skull stacks or something uh that would make it a lot more quality of life i plan on probably making a feedback post about this as it makes it very difficult to deal single target damage with Harvest because of this. And just literally just that little quality of life buff would probably help the build overall. So you don't have to rely too much on Death Wave. Now talking about Death Wave, we're going to talk about Death Seal. We take 5 points into Corrupted Consciousness so that when we get placed to 33% of our HP, we get a lot of increased damage. 1 point into Mortal Pulse, cast a Death Wave every second. And then five points into Tachyadra for the death wave frequency and the crit chance so that we crit most of the time with our death wave. Our death wave does ridiculous amounts of damage even though like, you know, it's, we're not expecting to at all, at all which is kind of ridiculous. Uh, three points into Desperate Shroud for a little bit of extra armor when our death seal is up. Just free extra armor is always nice. One point into Deadlock so that, you know, we obviously get locked at 33% of our HP so that all of our low life stuff works. 3 point into Moratarium for duration, 1 point into Soul Stability to reduce our, our health drain when we're in Death Seal, which helps a shit ton, then 1 point into the Quick and the Dead for the attack of the movement speed when we're outside of Death Seal, which makes movement monoliths very quick. Now for our other, uh, for Reperform, we take 4 points into Mistress of Decay so that we have 40% reduced drain, which helps a lot keeping uh, Reperform up. Four points into Soul for a Soul, you deal increased damage, 80%. Uh, Reaper's Curse, you deal another 100% increased damage, have a 100% increased crit. Health lost on kill doesn't necessarily matter because, you know, like you end up killing everything and leeching it all back anyways. Three points into Death's Door, you get 75% increased damage at low life. We're always at low life with this build, no matter what we're doing, pretty much unless if we're in Reaper form and not in Death Seal. So we get a significant amount of increased damage as you can tell which makes up for the fact that we don't do much damage with harvest two points travel into death comes quickly for the movement speed when we're going through monoliths then three points into rapid destruction for the attack speed you want to be attacking as fast as possible with this build as uh, like i said the on single target you have to get the skull stacks on single target to make you actually do any damage i do need better crit as well but i have shitty gear on now that's pretty much it for Reperform. For Bone Curse, the most important thing is that we have Cursed Limbs, so when we cast Bone Curse, we apply Bone Curse on hit, which counts as a curse, so that it doubles our damage with Harvest. Very essential for the build to function. Uh, if this doesn't exist, the build would feel terrible. We grab Mark for Death as well, so the reduce, uh, pen, uh, reduce resistance. Then, of course, we grab Marrow Thief. So this Bone Armor chance on kill is the same Bone Armor that comes from transplant. So as we grab nodes into transplant and get uh, effective bone armor, this will affect the bone armor that comes from bone curse. And this doesn't have a cooldown. Well, this does, which is very, very strong. Lots and lots of DR that we need because we're a melee build pretty much. That's pretty much it for bone curse. That's the most important parts. Now for transplant, it's your stereotypical transplant setup with the uh, kill threshold of 20% on with the usual defensive tree of using drink deep and all the bone armor stuff that's you know very uh very apparent it's pretty much it for the skills let's get into passives here so i'm running eight points in forbidden knowledge for the intelligence eight points into stolen vitality for the hp four points into blood armor for increased damage you could probably uh probably 
Later on, once you get a little bit better gear, you can run Blood Pact instead. That would probably work. Now, we grab eight points against death, so that we, a little life, we get 120% increased damage, which is insanely strong. Ten points in Apocrypha for the intelligence, as we need as much flat intelligence as possible to make us do damage with Harvest. Five points in the Grass of Fate, because all of our damage is necrotic, which is very convenient. Uh, eight points into Crippling Insight for 16 flat intelligence, insanely strong. Closing Wounds for 112% increased damage. Eight points into Three Plagues for Necrotic Penetration. This was actually nerfed recently. You used to be able to get up to 30%, but it's fine. Very small nerf. Five points into Deathbringer for increased attack speed and crit chance. Very strong for us. Crit Multi uh, Global from this, which is very strong as well, as it lets us get up to like 300% crit multi very easily. 10 points of necrotic energy. So this added damage does get affected by the 70% added damage effectiveness. So we only get like like 14, 15 ish melee necrotic damage, but it's still definitely worth for 10 points. Uh, five points in soul maw for the increased health leech and damage leech's health. 10 points in mind over body. Now for the last like five points, I would probably put it into ageless aesthetic so that we get more leech and t attack speed and movement speed. I just wasn't able to because it's only level 92, so I need more levels before i can do that that's pretty much it for the passive tree now for the gearing here uh idle slots i know i didn't unlock this idle slot but that's because i never actually got an idle to fit in that slot that i want the only reason i'm running this is for cooldown recovery speed with transplant now the most important idle would be to get damage wall transformed and increase necrotic damage but i have like you know cooldown recovery speed with transplants but you mainly want increased damage wall transform and increase necrotic damage then our two by ones, we have increased HP on both of them. As you know, we want as much HP as possible. Could probably go for a little bit more HP than that. For a helmet, crit chance, intelligence, endurance, and health, amulet, necrotic penetration, necrotic damage, and then whatever amount of HP you can get in frailty. I do not have frailty on this build, which probably would help a shit ton now that I think about it. <laughs> Uh, for a weapon, this is pretty much our perfect base. This is pretty much what we want. The reason why we're using a katana is because the base attack rate is 1.2, meaning that if we were to use like a two-handed weapon, we would not be doing that much attacks per second. We want as much attack speed as humanly possible as we can get, so that's why we're running a katana instead of like some kind of two-hander. Melee critical strike chance, obviously. Now, the only other kind of thing that would benefit us is like crit multi or increased necrotic damage as in, uh, flat melee necrotic does not exist as a prefix. So we can only get it from stacking intelligence from harvest. So our weapon pretty much becomes a glorified stat stick. And then our shield. Uh, I have a pretty good shield here. You could probably get away with just running block chance on your rings and your gloves. And ignore the extra block chance here. I was just having issues with tankiness. So I was like, you know what, let's cheat. Run my, my dawn shield that I had. Uh, for rings, intelligence, crit chance, endurance, HP, or block. Either way, uh, other ring, probably intelligence, crit chance, endurance, health, pretty strong. Then for the belt, mainly necrotic damage increased, uh, hybrid health and increased health. As you can tell, my gear is pretty ass, and that's because I haven't been able to invest into it much. Uh, but I was doing, like, empowered monos with this, so, like, I feel like as though I was doing just fine. Uh, for the gloves, we have increased attack speed, intelligence, uh, hybrid HP, and HP. I just, you know, didn't have the best gloves ever. Uh, these boots, you need intelligence, you want as much intelligence as possible, like I said, uh, increased movement speed, HP, HP, uh, as you can tell here, we, we have like 99 intelligence, so you can get up to 120, so that's about a 20% more damage boost, if you just get a little bit more intelligence, get luckier than I did, uh, for the relic, we want the decaying homunculus relic, as it gives us a lot of increased necrotic, since all of our damage is necrotic, all the increases to necrotic is just a global form of fire to all of our damage. We need intelligence on this base. I do not have intelligence on it because I myself is not that much intelligence. <laughs> and then res res, obviously, because it's usually what you put on relics these days is resistance. And like as you can tell, I did pretty well considering how shitty my gear was. You could probably upgrade this very quickly. I just uh, don't really have the time to upgrade. Uh, oh, for the chest as well. I forgot about the chest. So the only issue with this chest is it's LE res instead of HP. If you could run HP there, you can get a lot of EHP out of this. Increased necrotic damage will transform is an insane stat for us as, uh, like I said, we'll be transformed 90% of the time. So having that more damage is insane. With that being said, 
that's pretty much it for the build guide today, guys. Uh, I would not necessarily suggest this build to new players. This is more of, I want to play Harvest, so this is what I do. Then, uh, oh, this build is good. If you want a better Lich build, there's always Poison Lich, like I said. It's more of just a, this is what you can do. Now, is it what you should do? Not necessarily, but it's definitely what you can do. With that being said, thank you all for watching, and have a wonderful rest of your day wherever you're at, and bye.